I'm Tom Fenning. And I'm Peter Skerritt. And this is the Beckles Baptist Church Reading Together podcast. This podcast aims to encourage us as a church family as we read through Tim Chester's book, Enjoying God, so to prompt us in further thinking and discussion of what we have read. Um, This is podcast number nine in which we consider chapter eight from the book, which is entitled, In Every Supper We Can Enjoy the Sun's Touch. Um, So far in the book, we've had two chapters of introduction, chapters one and two, then three chapters looking at our relationship with God the Father, and this is the third and final of the chapters talking about how we relate specifically to God uh, the Son. And this chapter, on the surface of it, Pete, it looks like it's about one thing, Mm -hmm. but we're saying a a moment or two ago, actually it's about two things, two distinct things. Mm -hmm. So um, what are those things? Well, uh, first section seems to be uh, building a, a picture of um, encountering Jesus by the person of the Spirit. Um, and then in a kind of unexplained connection, no, not clear, uh, he moves to encountering Jesus in the Lord's table, in the Lord's Supper. So kind of connected, uh, the advocate, the Spirit, and the Lord's table um, but we need to spell out a little bit more how they connect to each other. I think so. So we're going to treat them separately yeah. and try and just show a little bit more of a link than we feel the chapter gives. Yeah. What, I think what we'd say is both of these things are really helpful. Yeah. It's just trying to discern how they fit together. But let's. And it would have been nice to have had a chapter on each, but obviously... The book, the book can only be <laughs> yeah, so long, quite, and there can yeah. only be so many podcasts as well. So we're going to keep <laughs> it trimmed and try and stick to the task. So he refers to the Holy Spirit... Mm mediating Jesus' presence to us as an advocate. Um, And having preached on um, these bits in John's Gospel, John 14 and 16 especially, I'm well aware that, as he says, that the the word advocate in the original language, the Greek, is a big word. As in, it's got a massive range of meaning and it's highly significant. Um, And you'll find different English translations go for different options. A helper or an advocate or a counsellor. what is it particularly we need to know about the Holy Spirit being the advocate of Jesus? Well, I think really that he's the, uh, the one who, um, well, if Jesus was the first advocate, uh, then G- uh, the Spirit is another. So in many ways, he, he's acting in much the way that Jesus did as our helper, spirit, comforter. Um, and so I think the, the picture he gives of uh, imagining that you are with the disciples, you're a fisherman, and you're being challenged by some religious leaders, or you're in the, in the boat, and you're thinking, we're going to drown. And, and in each case, what does the disciple do in their trouble? Well, they look over their shoulder, hoping that Jesus is somewhere to hand, because he's the one who's going to strengthen me, and help me, and counsel me, and support me. Um, and that's what it, what it means for Jesus uh, to be, or for the Spirit to be an advocate to us. He, we turn around and look around to him for all our help. Mm, yeah, but those, but, are just, those are just those delightfully yeah. earthy pictures, aren't yeah, they? You can, you can imagine being in the boat as a disciple, being yeah. terrified, or yeah. being asked a question by a religious leader yeah. and just feeling <laughs> ignorant of what to say, and then to look that Jesus is there, you go, oh, yeah. thank goodness, he, he, can, he can handle this. Yeah, yeah. so that, that's really, really helpful that he's there, and Jesus is present with us by his Spirit yeah. in those moments. Um, and, then, and then we get these delightful two word pictures that try to sum up what the Spirit does as our ambassador mm. on pages 102 and 103. And when he talks about him being an ambassador and a phone call. Um, so ambassador as in someone who is a spokesman on behalf of someone with real yeah. authority, a spokesman for a king or a president. So um, yeah. the Holy Spirit is Jesus' representative. He represents Jesus to us. Yeah. Why does Tim Chester go to the step then of talking about the Holy Spirit being like a phone call? Mm. Because with an ambassador, uh, the sense is that the Spirit is, only di- is distinct from Christ, but we're not really hearing from Christ or meeting Christ at all. But actually the phone call element, when you, yes, the person you're speaking to on the end of the line may be distant, but it's definitely their voice you're yeah. hearing. And he's saying, by the Spirit, you, you are connected to Jesus. So you're not just hearing via somebody else. You're hearing direct from Jesus by the Spirit. Mm. And you're hearing Jesus' very words, and his, you're getting his very comfort. Mm. So he says his words are immediate, even though he's physically absent. Mm. So both images capturing, or well, the ambassador, he's personal, and the phone call, he's immediate. 
by the Spirit. And it's through this ministry of the Spirit that we experience the Son's touch. And it's, it's a way in which it, it feels like a crossover chapter in that we're about to start talking about the Spirit, but we're here talking yeah. about the Son. And it, you've got to talk about the Spirit. And you can't, we, can't, we can't separate the two because we know the Son through the Spirit's ministry to us. And so it's no surprise that a chapter like this feels like both Son and Spirit played out in stereo yeah. at yeah, the yeah. same time. Yeah. Uh, so having talked about the Spirit being um, our advocate, he's the one through whom we know the touch of the Son. Tim Chester then goes on to talk about the Lord's Supper, so that, mm. that meal that we share as church where we share bread and wine to remind us of the body and the blood of Jesus broken and poured out for us um, so that we can be saved and made members of God's family. Mm. And Tim, Tim, Tim Chester just highlights the real importance of this meal. And it's, it's a meal through which the Spirit is present with us, through which the Spirit ministers to us. I suppose that's the, that's yep. the connection, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. He says halfway down page 104, the, the answer is how can Christ be present? The answer is that Christ is present by the Holy Spirit. He's not physically present, but he is spiritually present, mm -hmm. present by the Spirit. It kind of collapses, the spirit collapses the distance between Jesus and us. Good. And if you feel like, or these feel like two halves of a chapter, we feel that with you. We feel like <laughs> it's a chapter, of, which is basically probably two chapters that was made into one chapter, yeah, conflated. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why does Tim Chester make such a big deal of the Lord's Supper? Why yeah. is it significant, and how should we understand it? Well, I, th I think I don't know whether he, I can't remember whether he fleshes it out properly in the in the chapter, but I think the sense that we are uh, physical beings too, and that physical reality is material, tangible touch is really important to us. Throughout the Bible, we, we, you see that um, throughout the history of Israel, various physical markers, stones, and uh, the, you know, we're talking about the bread of the presence in the tabernacle. All of these reminders, tangible things, um, that make something spiritually true, tangibly, evidently invisible to us. Mm -hmm. um, he gives two images mm. linked to, to this. Do you want to help us with how it's like baptism and a, and a kiss? Yeah, so, so he, he uses the analogy of marriage and he takes the two, <coughs> yeah. two sacraments. So these are um, uh, physical acts that we are commanded to do by the Lord Jesus. And he talks about if we're to take an analogy of marriage, he says that baptism is a bit like the moment that someone gets married. They publicly testify to their faith in the Lord Jesus and they do that only once mm. and so he says baptism is a bit like marriage but then sharing a communion meal is a bit like a, a married couple exchanging a kiss it is a physical reminder of loving tenderness and sacrifice um, and it is evidence of the relationship being ongoing and real and just making sure that it is felt so actually the lord jesus presence is physically felt in communion and there's a sense in which we are physically reminded of his tenderness and his mm. kindness and his love and i just thought it's a really helpful thing that I, if, a, if a couple got married and never exchanged a kiss mm. there would be something profoundly unhealthy about that yeah yeah he says touch without words or words without touch could feel superficial hesitant as if it's still withholding his affection mm. and so it is that jesus gives us both words and touch mm. and I sense he's teeing up for his new book <laughs> uh, Tim Justice what is it truth that you can touch or something or yeah. something like that on the Lord's Supper um, and that's whether it. that features in a podcast like this in the future you'll just have to yeah. turn up <laughs> another time and find out yeah. Um, yeah. so yeah. tangible yeah. Mm. and it and and this meal is just a significant way in which we are reminded of the reality of our relationship with Jesus and it is not to be sidelined and I think the the reality of us being in lockdown mm. means that we pine and long for the time that we can share this meal yeah. and be reminded of what Jesus has done for us and of his love for us. But his love is not dimmed by the fact that we have not shared this meal more recently. Mm. Questions at the end, um, just so... We were thinking about one of the questions in particular um, for, from the first half of the, of the chapter. Uh, what, what difference, third question, uh, what difference would it have made to look over your shoulder and see with the eyes of faith Jesus present with you by the Spirit. So looking back over the past week or so, mm -hmm. something you've gone through, something you're struggling with, even now maybe, what difference would it make to, as if the disciples did to look over your shoulder and see Jesus present there? Yeah, I, I just, it just I think as a, I think every week as a dad, there's times when you just think, I just wasn't as kind or as gentle to my children then 
Um, and to look over my shoulder at that point of realization of failure and seeing the Spirit's presence reminds me of Jesus' kindness and his forgiveness, mm. his tenderness towards me. Uh, and his, his work is not done yet in making me ju- more gentle and kind as I should be. Yeah. Um, yeah. To yeah. sense that Jesus is there would be a kind of a shot in the arm that he's not done with me yeah. yet. Yeah. And that would be true as well in our ministries as well, not just in our failures, but um, he, he picks up on evangelism. But it would be true of pastoral care too as well. That, um, I, oh, I wish I wasn't in this on my own. I can't do this. I can't convict convict or convince them and he says well no um no, you look over your shoulder and you see that actually it's jesus is the one you have to look to you're not ever alone in what you're doing uh, in our failures and in things we're doing for him yeah. in service yeah Real. great okay so this um chapter eight podcast nine um the third and final of the chapters thinking about the sun in which we've been thinking about the fact that we can enjoy the sun's touch by the spirit's presence with us by sharing the lord's supper We'll be back next week as we move on to consider what does it mean to relate to God the Holy Spirit and how that works out in everyday life. Hope to see you then.